这里，呃，在这一轨呢，呃，之后两场议程都是跟呃资通讯比较相关的，所以包含这一场，我们邀请到了呃 ，Pablo， 呃 n o k i v o n o k i k o v n o k i k o v 对，有点难发音，对，那呃。他是呃，在资通讯里面非常专呃专业一个专家，他在资通讯领域已经待了二十年，并且参与一些呃标准的制定。那现在他的研究也主要在这种通资通讯领域，呃，四 G、五 G 啊、LTE 的漏洞挖掘。所以，我们这是邀很高兴可以邀请他来，呃，经验丰富的一个研究员来分享他在呃 VOLTE 上面的呃一些研究。所以，他今天要为我们分享的主题就是呃 ，How to hijack 呃。呃、uh, ，VOLTE Network， 那就让我们用呃热烈的掌声欢迎讲者带来今天演讲。Hello, um, my name is Pavel Novikov,、uh, and、uh, who I am? I'm、uh, almost ten、uh, year in telecom security, so I'm working,、uh, worked for some documents in GSMA,、uh, some kind of associations.、Uh, In telco industry, well known.、Uh, well, we doing、uh, some different kind of security assessment for mobile networks from totally different side of these networks. I mean, radio access network, roaming interconnection, and all other stuff. So, well, almost everything. Um, uh, this research is not、uh, only my job.、Uh, it was. Done also by Alex Anego, who was、uh, who is our ex-employee.、Uh, he did a lot of、uh, for such research, and also Sergey Mashuko, who doing such voltage assessment probably right now. So、uh, for some、uh, operator in in the world. So that's our research team. And、uh, well, first of all, I want to, to introduce that,、uh, how relevant this topic is. And、uh, why it's、uh, why Voltia is right now. So, but my first question: Who of you is using Voltia? Raise your hands, please. Okay. So most probably all of、uh, other people don't know <laughs> that they use it <laughs> because,、um, well,、uh, I will explain、um, something about、uh, history and.、Uh, Especially about reasoning in mobile networks, what was done and what after what. So there will be some kind of short course of mobile network evolution. So first of all, there was 2G network,、uh, which is、uh, basically only voice call network. So this、uh, network was done、uh, just to make calls and nothing else. Uh, well, but basically there was also short messages, SMS. So and that's it. No data, no no anything else. So this 2G network、um, was uh, built. Uh, so in mobile networks, there is also、uh, there, there is always、uh, two big pieces of the network. First of all, it's、uh, radio access network, and something inside the network which、uh, called some kind of core. And in 2G, it was circuit switched core. And here,、uh, public switched telephone network. So when you initially, when mobile phones、uh, appeared,、uh, most of calls well, was done to landline phones, and、uh, so that was the main connection. Uh, but uh, it was a time when maybe dial-up was、uh, like internet, and uh, well, uh, as uh, 2G network was introduced. It also can make calls, so some people started to use it like dial-up. But the speed was very slow because um, uh, because uh, dial-up is based on analog network, but、uh, 2G network is digital network, and they made a lot to make uh, analog uh, voice uh, to code it in digital and to make it robust. So all the network 2G was specifically built for voice. Uh, so the speed of such connection was、um, really awful, and、uh, at some point they understand that they need to do something and、uh, to to provide better connection to the internet from 2G network. So they added a、uh, thing which called packet switch core.、Uh, it consists of、uh, several pieces. I will not go deep. What is that? And、uh, it was directly connected to the internet. And the speed of、uh, 2G data it was called GPRS. 
uh, was like 60 uh, kilobit per second. For now, it's almost nothing because uh, I don't know some lightweight page uh, for uh, uh, 10. Uh, 100 kilobits will load about 15, se uh, 15 seconds, and uh, you, even it may uh, drop your connection just because of timeout, so it's so long for now. So then uh, they, when they built all this stuff, they realized that 2G radio is not good enough for uh, packet data. So they decided to build some new radio, uh, which was 3G. So they just added new radio to the same uh, subsystem and uh, well it becomes much more better because um, the, sp the speed in 3G is all, all um, the maximum speed is about 10 megabits but real it's about 1 megabit it's still enough even for tomorrow uh, for today to use internet to surfing and so on so it's still kind of okay um, uh, but at some point they realized that even 3G, which is focused on uh, data, uh, is not capable to uh, transfer such amount of data which, uh, which is now appears. Because uh, as uh, bigger throughput you provide to customers, uh, as bigger they try to drain. So they started to uh, watch YouTube, for example. In 2G network it was not, all, it was not possible at all. So even if you think uh, to watch video from your phone, it was like crazy idea. But uh, when 3G appeared, it started to be not crazy idea, but still you can do it some, somehow and sometimes. Uh, so they rethink all this stuff and build new uh, network, which is 4G network, LTE network, and they built a new evolved packet core. Uh, so new radio, new core, so uh, all this stuff sh uh, should carry much uh, bigger throughput uh, to customers. Um, well, if you will be, uh, well, kind of, um, if you have a look on this 4G network, uh, you can see that there is no connection to public switched uh, telephone network. So, as you can see, 4G network now connected only to the internet and don't have any voice, basically. And uh, it, it, it is strange, but it's a reality that 4G network was made specifically for data. And, uh, well, they... Um, uh, so how it should be connected, so how you should make voice calls. Uh, initial idea, not initial, but the only option for that is IP multimedia subsystem, which called IMS um, subsystem. So uh, the idea is to, to close all these circuit switches, old core, all the, I don't know, protocols and so on, so, and start to use IP. Uh, and to use C protocol based uh, uh, architecture because uh, in all previous generations there was very specific tel telco protocols and uh, they used, so it's kind of security by obscurity. There is no security but as there is no understanding so you can touch it, you can get access to it. Uh, that's why uh, it was like impossible to, to find even vulnerabilities there because uh, mobile network, like, uh, they they think that they are closed enough and no one will uh, take into the their core and so on. But here they started to move to some usual IP uh, subsystems. And uh, this subsystem uh, and this connection via 4G network uh, to this IMS infrastructure called uh, Voice Over LTE or VoLTE. Uh, well, I, I don't have anything about the, uh, voice over Wi-Fi on slide, but the idea is the same. So they have uh, this IMS infrastructure and ju just added some node which connected to the internet to allow you to get access to this IMS infrastructure via Wi-Fi. Not only Wi-Fi, basically. You can use even Ethernet or any other type of uh, connection, uh, but still uh, you can connect to that. Um, but but uh, this voltage technology was really unlucky <laughs> because um, 
uh, to bring 4G network uh, faster uh, in deployment to make it, uh, I don't know, to grow it much faster. Uh, they made some kind of temporal solution, uh, which means that uh, you, well, not you, but mobile operator, uh, operator may uh, introduce 4G network, uh, build this evolved packet core, but don't build IMS infrastructure. Um, but uh, when subscriber trying to call, he immediately switched to old generation of the network, to circuit switched core, and uh, as a result, uh, your phone will be, so when you start call, so you just push button call, and your phone immediately switch to 3G or even to 2G network uh, to uh, provide voice call for you. And when, you, when your voice call is, uh, will be finished, it will be switched back immediately again in 4G network. So in most of cases, people even don't understand that uh, they switch it to 3G network. But as a result of uh, this idea, uh, you can see that uh, there is one circuit switched core, one packet switched core, one evolved packet switched core, and it's kind of uh, three generation uh, of the networks which uh, exist simultaneously in one, the n in one network. And it's kind of not very comfortable for operators because uh, they need uh, to support, to maintain all this kind of technology zoo. Uh, so they would like to, to decommiss some of them, uh, especially for example 2G network. But when they uh, started to think how to become a 2G network, they realized that it is not possible. Because uh, in most of, uh, so due to uh, so spread of 2G network, 2G modem, so there is a lot of IoT devices which uh, use 2G network. Uh, it, they don't need uh, some high connection, high speed, and so on. So they need just, for example, in some uh, oil factories, they need just uh, to have some sensor which will send a couple of bytes, maybe once per hour or maybe once per day. So they don't need speed, they don't need anything, and they need uh, uh, that this device will not drain too much energy, so it can uh, work from some batteries. And 2G network per perfectly fit in uh, such requirements. Uh, but 3G network and 4G network, they are not fitting in that because uh, they just to maintain uh, 3G or 4G connection, you need to spend much more power. Uh, so you can't use some small sensors with batteries and so on. So they realized that 2G network, well, it's very difficult to decommiss. Uh, then they started to think how maybe to decommiss 3G network, but still, uh, 4G coverage for those time was not so good. So and 3G network, it was like the only other possible way to have data. So as a result, this three network and this uh, technology zoo was uh, in and still in most of the networks still in place. And uh, it's it's a very big problem for operators because. Uh, this piece is really obsolete, and there is no any updates for that. There is no software updates when they come to um, vendor, for example, for Huawei or Ericsson. They told, well, 2G network, are you, are you serious? <laughs> we, we, we will not do anything for that because now we're building 5G. And uh, well, regarding 5G, uh, I removed uh, legacy stuff, so here only 4G. So we see that uh, this the same uh, 4G infrastructure, and the uh, 5 5G network. It's also well, I would say it's trick. It's like old uh, trick uh, where people don't doesn't know anything about that. So basically, in most of the uh, countries, uh, we see that it is not really 5G. Uh, they just added uh, 5G base station, and. Uh, uh, so they added uh, for 5G bandwidth, and uh, when uh, subscriber connected uh, to 4G network, so it's kind of channel aggregation. So when subscriber will drain too much uh, data, for example, he is watching YouTube or something like else, so uh, 5G, uh, 5G channel will be added to 4G, not 
even substituted, not even changed to 5G, but it will be added. And uh, uh, the data will pass over uh, 5G base station to 4G base station to emulate 4G network. And all everything inside will be uh, like for 4G. And even uh, we understand the reason why uh, we, we had 2G, why we had 3G, why we had 4G. Now what's the reason for 5G? Uh, to provide uh, more throughput for users? Well, it's not really true because uh, really 5G and SA you can provide, uh, I saw for example in uh, Dubai, uh, it can provide uh, 1.3 gigabit per second. I don't know how to use this throughput on your phone if you don't use torrents on, on your phone or I don't know what else. Uh, it is also uh, almost impossible to use uh, by phone. But the idea is that uh, 5G needed uh, in some overpopulated cities when you have kind of high building, there is thousands of people in this building, and uh, 4G network, um, it, it can uh, handle about maybe 2,000 people on uh, one base station, but it is not, not possible to provide more. Uh, data to more people. So 5G network, uh, they increase uh, throughput, but they, they increase throughput not for uh, for each of you, not for me, but for all of us to provide possibility to drain data for all of us simultaneously. So that's kind of uh, how it works in 5G. And uh, I also check in uh, uh, Taiwan and probably you have only one network who built a real 5G network. And how real 5G network looks? Ah, and here, still in uh, in 5G NSA mode, uh, still Volte will be present because main technology here is still LTE. And you can decommiss LTE because 5G will not work uh, without LTE. So, and the real 5G network, <laughs> they have uh, again, new core, new devices, new radio, everything new, but IMS core will be the same. So when we are talking about Volte security, uh, we also talking about 5G uh, also. And uh, even in, if in 5G it will be called VoNR, Vo which uh, can be uh, its voice over new radio, uh, but to, um, to be honest, uh, 5G it is not new radio because uh, it doesn't provide some kind of huge step forward uh, for throughput because uh, they did it just uh, in extensive way. They expanded uh, bandwidth, frequency bandwidth, and uh, as a result they provided more uh, throughput. But it is not like new, very new technology which uh, provide some kind of uh, intensive step forward. For example, 4G network was like intensive step forward, and 3G network also, comparing to 2G network, it was very good step forward. But 5G, it's not so big step forward, but they just expanded uh, frequency bandwidth. But anyway, we don't care about this part, we care about this part. So, uh, voice uh, over NR, it is almost the same as voice over LD. And again, uh, such trick with switching uh, to all the generation of the network still works even in 5G network. So in an NSA mode, they still will drop you to 3G network or to 2G network. Uh, also, I check it in Taiwan, it probably 2G network does not exist anymore, but 3G network is still there. Uh, so, and why it is exist? Just because of that, because uh, to make possible to make calls, uh, you need to have some legacy network, 2G or 3G network. Um, and even uh, if you build a uh, real 5G network, still this trick still works. Uh, we still see that uh, even you have 5G network, you have 1.3 gigabit connection, but uh, to make call you still use like 3G network or even 2G network. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the scene. And uh, at the beginning, I told that uh, Volte is very unlucky technology. And now <laughs> I will explain why. Because first LTE network was deployed in December of um, 2009. 
and uh, uh, the first uh, Volta network support appears only two years, two and a half years later. Uh, so in USA there was first implementation of Volta and only one phone was uh, supported. It was called LG Connect 4G. And uh, <coughs> full-featured Volta network appears only in May 2014 in Singapore. Uh, again, with, uh, with the only phone, which uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 3. Uh, so, so almost new, f almost all new phones having Volta support only in 2020. So, 2020, almost 10 years uh, left after this uh, LTE network was introduced, and Volta network should be uh, deployed simultaneously with LTE network. But we see that no, it it doesn't work in this way. So only in 2020, only phones started to support uh, Volta without any problems, and it still means that in 2020 you still can't uh, switch to Volta network uh, fully for operators because uh, because you still have some legacy phones, and uh, even in some developing countries, uh, the people still using button phones. So well, it's it's still not possible. So. Uh, telco industry, it looks like that. So it's very slow, very um, like very big, very slow, and uh, they don't move in too fast. Uh, but uh, telco industries have some kind of very interesting point that, um, for example, if you have some, if you think about other technologies, how to connect to the internet, for example, uh, you may use, I don't know, here you may use Wi-Fi, which provides you more than one gigabit per second uh, speed. But somewhere in Germany, is still popular ADSL uh, technology. So they have about 25 megabit per second download and about two megabits upload. So it's still okay for them, and they, it's not like technology race. They they are not racing uh, because they are not affecting any uh, anyhow each other. But telco industry, it's totally different because uh, telco industry, it's kind of a uh, worldwide mobile network. It's not only uh, here you s you sit in, uh, in in your country and you can do whatever you want in your country. No, because uh, you have subscribers who moved to another country. For example, I came here. Uh, and still I can use uh, my phone, uh, so my, I don't know, my parents can call me uh, using my number, so still they uh, highly integrate in between each other and uh, connected between each other. So they can't, uh, the first one can't run too far from the last one, so they still need to be kind of uh, near to each other. Otherwise, uh, all the idea will, I don't know, break, and uh, after that, everyone will call in, I don't know, in Telegram or Skype or something else, I don't know. So, and due to this, uh, it's kind of bombshell happens in telco industry because Ver Verizon USA uh, retired their 2G and 3G network simultaneously by December, well, by end of uh, 2022. Well. Uh, they announced it, it quite um, hurt, but no one believed in that because initially they uh, said that they will decommiss their uh, 2G and 3G network even in end of uh, 2019. But as you remember, only in 2020 all the phones started to support Volte, so that's why they were not able to do that. And uh, so that's why they postponed it. And everyone in the world thinks that they will postpone it anymore, so for some years more. But no, they, they didn't do that. So they removed all this legacy stuff. And uh, you can see that their network becomes very, very simple and easy. And it's very easy to conf uh, configure, maintain, and so on. So. Uh, and what it means for all other operators in the world? It means that sub if your subscriber move, for example, in USA, uh, this subscriber will not be able to call anymore because they don't have legacy network, 3G network, 2G network, so they have only uh, 4G and 5G network. And uh, to provide them uh, voice calls, they need to 
have voltage connection in the roaming. But before you make uh, voltage connection in roaming, you, you need to build voltage connection even in your country. And uh, kind of money and reputation are affected for them. So, and as a result, uh, it's kind of built voltage network in 60 seconds for many ne network operators in the world because uh, some of them had like uh, test bed to test how it works, but uh, they don't care about it. Basically, I was on some uh, conference of mobile operators in maybe 2016, and I raised the question, when you will deploy Volte network? And he asked me, why you need it? Because for us, it, it will not provide more money, it will not provide us reputation, it will not provide us anything. Uh, for us, it is better to invest, for example, in radio networks to expand our coverage and so on. And, uh, so they, they didn't care about that. So, but now they started to build, uh, build uh, their Volte networks very fast. Uh, many of them were built in basically a few months. And uh, as a result, many configuration mistakes were made. So, let me explain what is IMS infrastructure, what is uh, the Mm, how it works. Uh, if you see this uh, screen, so you see that, uh, well, subscriber connected to this, it passed here, and finally his data will go out to the internet or to the IMS. And uh, to understand how we can hijack this network, we need to understand how we can uh, rule this, because it's not clear how you can uh, control this. And basically, it's very easy. <laughs> uh, if you go to configuration in your phone, uh, there will be some kind of mobile configuration, and you will find uh, APNs, which is called access point names. And uh, there is internet. It may call different in different operators. It may be any, any other world, world but uh, for now, many networks use just internet. So if you put here internet, so you will access to the internet. But if you put here IMS, you will connect to IMS network. And uh, um, to make phone understand, so when uh, you add IMS uh, APN, uh, you also need to add IPN type IMS uh, to make phone understand which, uh, so uh, each uh, APN it will be one more uh, interface in your phone inside. So, but uh, when phone have two interfaces uh, which is work simultaneously, you need to understand which use for internet, which use for uh, SIP protocols, etc. So when you type IMS type uh, IPN type like AMS, uh, then uh, you will be passed to IMS uh, network and connected. But phone will understand that it is IMS. You do, uh, it don't need to send packet data there. So it need uh, to send only voice connections there. Uh, and again, security by obscurity. It's very popular scene for telco operators. Uh, I showed on previous slides that you can see. Uh, APN configuration, uh, I mean IMS configuration here. It was Android 8, but already in uh, Android 10 you can't see IMS anymore because phone hide it and you don't see it. So it's again point of security by obscurity in telco in, uh, world. And uh, what is IMS network itself? IMS network it's uh, quite, so it's also contained quite uh, huge amount of uh, different elements. I will not uh, go deep into explaining how it works, but you need to understand only this one is the first one, uh, PCSCF, uh, which is proxy, uh, which is made like uh, some border security control. So it's proxy sh which should block all, I don't know, all necessary, uh, so it should provide only necessary data to your, s uh, to your phone and uh, it should hide all this infrastructure from you. Um, so the question, again, how to hijack it? And uh, the first thing is to break rules. Uh, when you use APN, uh, so, and IMS uh, APN, you just can change it to default. Default, it means uh, APN type, which will be used for 
is the internet. Yes, you will lose internet connection, but you will have access uh, to IMS infra uh, infrastructure and IMS network like uh, to the usual network. So you can open, I don't know, terminal emulator on your phone and even run and map. But as you can see, and map is not here. <laughs> so it's also kind of problem. Not problem, it's not a problem. Basically, you can build it from sources. Or even you can find uh, some already built uh, uh, built for Android and map and so on. But still, you need a lot of tools to do some kind of penetration testing. So it is more convenient. Eh. And uh, very interesting thing when we explained it for, for example, one customer, they told, well, uh, it's too difficult for usual customer. I don't know. We don't care about maybe 100 freaks in country who can do this. So, but we, when we show this one, so we can use LTE dongle and uh, connect it to laptop. And uh, again, break rules, not use internet uh, APN, but use IMS APN. As a result, we can get uh, access to, to IMS network. And um, what we found in this IMS network, uh, it's probably the first uh, subsystem in telco network which is accessible for user. So you as user can do this trick and you can uh, get access to IMS infrastructure and uh, well, start at least some usual penetration testing. You can scan them by Nmap and uh, usually we see some SSH as usual. Maybe FTP as usual. So it's, mm, well, it's, as I told, it's uh, built quite fast. And uh, they didn't have enough time to understand what they built. And so a lot of mi misconfiguration were made. And one of that is a uh, thing which called subscriber isolation. F uh, so for internet connection, uh, if two subscribers connected to the network, they, uh, they usually they have some kind of gray IP address. Uh, from private network, and they can access to each other. So they can access only to the internet. Uh, so, and it's done by this uh, PGW, uh, which have like uh, turn on button, like enable subscriber resolution, and that's it. But for IMS infrastructure, I, I don't know why, but, uh, well, I, I have ideas why, but for IMS infrastructure, when you connect to IMS, uh, you can reach another subscriber. And when we realize that, so we connected laptop and we see that uh, it's still possible to connect to our laptop. And the first thing, uh, well, as we, um, well, uh, long time in telco infrastructure, we started from overcomplicated start. Uh, and we thought that, well, let's try to ba build fake IMS infrastructure here. So, and we started to think how to build it. We don't have public network, so we don't need all this stuff. So we don't also need IP phones connected, so we can, uh, I don't know, don't need this stuff. Uh, instead of this stuff, we can use Kamaleo. It's open source software. And the last point is uh, HSS. HSS, it's some piece which was on all previous slide. It's basically a database which uh, provide authentication for your subscriber. And authentication in mobile network is quite strong uh, because uh, sec uh, secret key is stored in SIM card and stored in HSS. So there is no way to intercept it somehow in the middle. Uh, so we realized that we can bypass this authentication and uh, we just implement simply proxy <laughs> which, can, which bypass it to real IMS network and authenticate our subscriber in real network. Uh, so the next step, it was like how to push the phone uh, address of our uh, uh, fake P uh, CSCF. And basically, it is the problem because it's sent uh, via radio from MME on the uh, when subscriber connects. So we we have kind of a lot of experience in uh, core network. So we tried a lot of uh, with some core nodes, but realized that 
uh, well, it's not easy, very not easy at all. But so we decided to hack phone itself. So you can use, for example, this app uh, for Android, which is called uh, Core IMS. But I would say it will um, it will not work on all the phones. It's um, usually it works with Samsung phones, but for others it's not good. And uh, if you um, have very modern uh, Android. Probably uh, you you will get this configuration because it's uh, built in phone configuration, uh, maybe for some engineering purpose or something like that. But we realized that as new Android we see as less configuration accessible here. So probably you will not be able to set up PC, uh, PCSCF uh, configuration here. Uh, so sometimes it is not enough. But root may help. For example, in Samsung phones, you can find in uh, system files some XML, uh, which uh, you can just uh, change something and uh, add, for example, this IP address. Or if we are talking about Qualcomm-based phones, you can add. Uh, there is some kind of in chipset. There is some file system called MBN. There is some special tools for editing that. So you call. Or you also can do that. But it's very deep uh, intrusion in the phone. It's not like you can do it remotely. So we was quite upset. We did it. Uh, we reconfigured phone. We implemented MITM fully here. But we was quite upset because um, yeah, too many um, things we need to do. But when we realized, when we did it, we realized that we uh, can do I don't know. We can set up some our services in IMS network. So we did very easy stuff. We connected laptop to the internet. Uh, we deployed Open VPN server on this laptop. We installed OpenVPN uh, software on phone. We reconfigured uh, APN as IMS by default. And now we can uh, connect to, uh, to the internet by, uh, via IMS infrastructure, uh, via our own laptop. And we, so, and we can use internet for free. Why for free? Uh, because uh, there is different charging policies for this APN. Because usually internet APN, uh, which is usual, uh, it's charging by data which you spend. So if you spend, I don't know, one gigabit, so they count one gigabit and uh, they take your money for that. But for IMS infrastructure, it will not work in this way because for IMS, it should uh, count your minutes and uh, as this network was uh, was made for calls, so it counts by minutes. But uh, basically, it's done by IMS infrastructure uh, in core of IMS infrastructure. But we don't touch this infrastructure at all. We bypassing it just like uh, after PGW. So due to lack of isolation, we can establish a direct connection from subscriber to another subscriber. We can send OpenVPN or any peer-to-peer uh, -peer network. Uh, I'm not sure about Torrent, but probably you can use it even for Torrent. Uh, so, and when uh, these operators who just deployed Volte network, uh, the next step they, they should do is uh, provide Volte roaming connection. And for Volte roaming, it's very, I don't know, very interesting thing because if you will able to use data in roaming for free, it will be very nice, but, but not for operator because uh, it will cost for him. Uh, there is some indication for mobile network operator. It's just turn on subscriber resolution. It's just one switch which is already there, but I don't know why fo they forgot uh, about this. And implement IMS network monitoring. Uh, why it is not common to, uh, I don't know, you didn't hear about this, uh, anything about, uh, because telco network is kind of closed industry. Moreover, they don't have monitoring of this, uh, of this connection, so they don't know what happens inside their network, basically, until uh, there's some kind of traffic anomalies or something like that. But if you only one, not a uh, whole country using that, so it's kind of they don't have monitoring. They, do, they will not understand that. So, uh, due to our uh, security assessment, we realized that more than half of the network do, uh, so they have this misconfiguration. 
And uh, as mobile operators are very big and slow and close, they don't share information which is our, which each other. So, well, uh, I don't know. Ten years of Volte network, but no, uh, now they uh, deployed Volte in Harry, so it's it's not secure <laughs> as a result for them. Uh, and even for customer, I can say that uh, legacy network is more secure when you have call over 3G network. Uh, it passes uh, through the, some specific telco protocol which is not accessible to anyone. So it looks like more secure than Volte for now. So that's it from my side for today. If you have any question, please raise it. Okay. Uh, uh. 呃，我们这边应该时间比较短一点，但应该还是可以让大家问一两个问题。有没有呃，有没有人会中想要询问问题的？ OK， 啊，啊，请。嗯， I want to add something that might be related, related but it's not like directly related. Okay. So, uh, when I Like when you look at Shodan or Census, whatever, you see there's a lot of like exposed GTP servers on the internet, and I wonder, do you have an idea why they expose GTP servers on the internet? Uh, well, uh, it's definitely not related to that, but it also was uh, some my research maybe 2014. So the the thing is that that um, uh, GTP protocol is telecom protocol which should be uh, used inside core network, but uh, we we can't network by ourselves. I mean, we whole internet, uh, whole four billion of IP addresses, and uh, got a lot of uh, success result to to the GTP. But uh, when you mm, and if you use Shodan, it use kind of echo request message for for uh, to, to 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 find this, and echo request message it's kind of very simple like ping request in HO protocol uh, in ICMP protocol. So <coughs> uh, when we started to analyze the data which we uh, uh, get, so we realized that some network nodes, uh, so some vendors do support GTP protocol itself. So they have some service which runs on uh, their network device. Uh, we were surprised when we found it in Microtic. So Microtic, it is not like telco, uh, telco industry, but they have th this GTP support. So uh, when you open Shodan, you will see only results for echo request. And from our experience, echo request kind of, it may be supported by many nodes which is not related to telco at all. Uh, so to make it more, um, result more better, you need to use another message. For example, create PDP context request by GTP protocol. And if you receive success answer to that, that's already a bad thing for, for mobile operator. OK. 那因为我们这场时间已经超过了，但如果大家有问题，就欢迎到台前来，呃，可以直接跟讲者交流。那我们这一场议程就到这边，那让我们再次掌声，谢谢讲者。Thank you.